Aloha Hawaii Verse podcast listeners. This episode is brought to you by Farmers Market Hawaii, a brand with integrity based cultural designs inspired by the life of Hawaii and its history. They're one of the biggest streetwear brands in Hawaii. You love them. I love them. Their hats are awesome. Their clothes are awesome. It's always so meaningful wearing something from Farmers Market Hawaii. Shout out to Keone, the owner of it. He's amazing, doing awesome things for the community. Make sure you support them. Mahalo to them for sponsoring this episode. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the podcast. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaiiverse podcast, a podcast that supports local by surfing waves instead of the internet. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and we have a guest that knows a little bit about the surf life. But before we introduce her, as always, let me tell you about our local business giveaway being provided by the Moni's Family Surf. They are giving away a private or semi-private lesson worth up to $300. So if you're trying to learn to surf, go enter now. Head to Hawaiiverse right now to enter. Okay, let's introduce our amazing guest today. Our guest today is an amazing wahine from the island of Oahu. She is a photographer, business owner, lover of music, surf instructor, wife, and mother of five. She runs two surf schools in Waikiki called Fate Surf School and Moniz Family Surf. This mother has been an inspiration and role model to so many people, not just her own family, for years, and I am so excited that she is blessing us with her presence today. She is everyone's favorite auntie and mom. Her name is Tammy Moniz. Hello, Tammy. Welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Hi. Well, wow. Well, that was a that was a nice introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I mean, you earned it. You earned all those accolades over the years. Oh, gosh. Yeah, and I'm so excited and happy to meet you in person. Yeah, you yeah, too. This is awesome. Yeah. So, I just, first off, I just want to congratulate you for raising such a beautiful, successful family. Mm -hmm. And also, my next question is, who's your favorite child? I don't have a favorite child. I tell people, people when I had my first, um, people like would say, "Oh, when you have a second one, um, is it like you're, you know, you're you're taking your love for one child and and separating it for another, you know, and and taking away from that?" And as I had children, I'm like, "No, it's almost like you get a hundred percent, and then you get another hundred percent. So now you have two hundred percent, and then you have three hundred percent of love to See, go around." I understand that in a way where. After I eat dinner and I'm really full, I have a separate compartment for <laughs> dessert. So I have a hundred percent more for dessert. So I understand yes, that. Yes. So that ma that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, okay, that's awesome. I was just totally joking, but yeah, Mahalo. That's such a good answer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we have a lot to get into, but before we get into everything, I gotta know where are you from, where are you grad, and what was it like growing up? Um, well, I'm from the, the South Side, but um, when I was I moved around a lot. I went to a different elementary school every year because oh. of living situations. And my mom and dad got divorced and then she remarried and we moved out to the North Shore and then came back to Hawaii. So I ended up my, like from fifth to sixth, sixth grade years and on in Hawaii. And mm. I graduated from Kaiser High School. Oh, I did you know I graduated did from Kaiser you? High School? I just yeah. had my 40th an, um, anniversary. Oh, what did they call it? Uh, reunion. Last night. Oh, is it you graduated? Two nights ago. My, my mom graduated from Kapalama High School. Um, from she boarded from the Big Island, but she, she just celebrated her 40th too. Did so you guys she? Are the same. 82. Yeah, 82. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually from the Big Island. I went to Hawaiian Immersion School all my life, but my senior year of high school, I moved to Kaiser to play sports. Did you really? So that's why I'm a Kaiser alumni. Aww. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Kaiser got go Cougars. <laughs> all right. So, so you so you grew up mostly in town, but you finished high school at Kaiser. And so what, what was it like, like ha moving schools all the time? Were you able to create long lasting friendships or was it really hard to connect with people? I mean, it, initially it's always hard to um, go into a new, fam you know, mm -hmm. I remember every time I went into a new school as an elementary school. But then I feel like um, through the years I have met so many people and it's almost been, I had to learn how to be okay with being in new situations mm -hmm. and meeting new people. So I feel like I have I'm so rich in friendships, you know, mm. um, maybe not so many long lasting from elementary school, but definitely throughout my, you know, um, intermediate and high school mm -hmm. life I, and beyond. It's mm -hmm. been amazing. So what, what kind of things were you into? Did you, you didn't because you didn't grow up surfing, right? No, my brothers did, mm -hmm. but I was always afraid of the ocean. And so I just. I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, went to the beach, but you know, it was I was just scared of the waves and stuff. Yeah. And then when I was twenty, I started working at Locomotion, 
in um, Kapiolani. Mm-hmm. They had the um, store there, and I started. My my boss Lee um, took me surfing, and just threw me on the board and mm-hmm. paddled out. And that, I guess that was teaching how to surf. <laughs> so you just caught the the bug after that. Well, yeah. I mean, I you know you're around the boards, you're around the, everyone talking about it, and I'm like, okay, well, if you you want to take me, but literally they teach you by getting you on a short board and pretty much just saying, come on, let's go, and you have to just paddle out and follow mm-hmm. them, and they go out and catch waves, and they're surfing. Mm-hmm. You know, surfers are very selfish when they go out <laughs> and surf, so yeah. you just kind of have to figure it out, and um, and of course I wanted to ride a short board because that's what all the cool people were doing and there weren't any there weren't any um many girls surfing mm. if i went out on the lineup there was probably just me or two two of us surfing in general or just on a short board compared to a long board long borders there weren't any women long borders out there there were just men old wow. old guys surfed all the uncles <laughs> all the old guys so it's like wh- my husband would you know tell me when we were dating he's like let's just you know I'll take you out on the longboard. I'm like, I'm not riding a longboard. <laughs> he goes, it'll be so much easier if you go on the longboard. I'm like, I'm not going on the longboard. So pretty much for one year, I just paddled. <laughs> and I learned to duck duck dive. I'm a really good duck diver. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Cause, so when Zeke was on the podcast, one of his advice was to start with a longer board, a yeah. bigger board, and just learn how to read the ocean. But you did the opposite of that. Well, ba- see, in these days, mm. longboarding is in. Mm-hmm. Right. I guess in my yeah, days right. it was not in. Only the mm-hmm. old guys did it, so I didn't want to be on a longboard. I wanted to be on a shortboard. Mm. Yeah, but it took me a, a while to catch my wave That's and so hard. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I'll ever go to shortboarding because <laughs> longboarding is just so much easier. Yeah, I'm, I'm a cruiser, so that's, exactly. that's what I love to do. Wow. Okay. So, so, how did you and Tony meet? Well, um, I was working at Locomotion, and he was riding for Locomotion. So mm. he's a professional surfer, and he um, was a team rider for Locomotion. But he was traveling when I started working there. And one, you know, I would hear his name from my friends who surfed. They would always talk about, oh, Tony Moniz. I'm like, oh, Tony Moniz, <laughs> like, who's that? And he's like, oh, he's a Christian local guy. And I'm like, oh. like, But I didn't make that. I just pretended like it was. Yeah, you just had to play it off or oh, whatever. But, you know, but I listened, and they they said he's humble, and they just said all the right things, not knowing that you know I was like, oh, you know. Well, You're back then, notes. yeah. Well, you can't like no. It's like mm-hmm. who's Tony Moniz? Yeah, yeah. What's his handle? You know, it's exactly. like you can just look yeah. him up. And but back then, they're they're either in a magazine or an encyclopedia. Mm-hmm. There was no way to look up a picture of him, so I just had to imagine, <laughs> you know. And so I did not know what he looked like. And I think it was probably a couple months, um, and I knew that, well, I was, I was working, and he, somebody came in, and they just, so I'm going to back up. The normal um, surf, um, pro surf, surfers that would come into the store was Buttons, Kaluhi Okulani, mm. and Larry Bertelman, and if y- anyone knows them, they're, like, mm-hmm. very loud and, you know, like, like friendly and just like hey i'm here and blah, 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 mm-hmm. you know so that's what i was used to they were visiting a lot you know mm-hmm. and um but one day this guy comes in and um he just comes in he looks at the surf surf magazines right by the door no no loud noises or anything and i don't know my heart started to like and i said to my manager john and i'm like john who is that guy he goes, oh, that's Tony Moniz. And I'm like, oh. It was crazy. Like, my, 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 I, it's like I knew inside, yeah. you know? And I'm, so I am Japanese, mm-hmm. right? And I grew up very, you know, kind of like shy, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, traditional Japanese, part, yeah, very timid. Very timid yeah. and shy. Um, I mean, I was friendly, mm-hmm. but I was shy, and I would never introduce myself. But I felt like this was my chance. <laughs> yeah. And so he, pass by and I, I'm like, hi, Tony, my name is Tammy. I am, you know, Diane and Paula's friends. They surf with you. And she's like, oh, cool. You know, and that was our, my meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, and then <laughs> what happened after that? And then um, my friend Paula kind of m- made a date after church. And we, we went to, we went to down to earth and ate vegan manapuas <laughs> for lunch. Oh, I didn't even know vegan manapua was a thing. <laughs> It wasn't that great, <laughs> but it was my first date. <laughs> wow, and it just, it, everything just connected yeah, after that. Yeah, Wow, what, what was your first impression of him? 
Like, oh, he was quiet mm-hmm. and just real humble. I really enjoyed my time with him. Mm-hmm. It was, he, he didn't, he was nothing like, you know, he didn't talk about himself or anything. Mm-hmm. It was it was show just, off-y. No, not mm-hmm. at all. He was very humble and mm-hmm. I, I really liked him. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't help but not. Like I liked him before I seen him. Yeah. Oh, because love at first sight. Is well, that an example? You no, know, it's his, his name. So when my friends would talk about him, Tony Moniz, Tony Moniz. Um, so my last name is Fukunaga, mm-hmm. my maiden name, and I love my grandparents so much. Mm-hmm. But it was it's hard to roll off that last name, right? What's your name, Tammy Fukunaga? Mm-hmm. It's just hard, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so when I heard his name, I was like, Tony and Tammy Moniz. <laughs> That's so nice. It does sound nice. I did nice. fall yeah. in love TNT. with the name as well. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, I strung that together before I met him. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> uh, was it trademark TM? Is that what it is? TM. TM and Tammy TM. Tammy Moniz. Yeah. Tony and you wanted Tam. to. Yeah. That sounds, that does have a good ring. It does. Tony and Tammy. Mm-hmm. You should have a TV show. <laughs> Tony and Tammy Moniz. Keeping up with Tony and Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so little while, how long was it before you started to have kids? So you, you got married? Yeah, then- we got married and um, we had a, um, our first pregnancy ended up in a miscarriage. Oh. And that was a really, I've never known anyone that had a miscarriage. And so, of course, when, when I got pregnant, I was just so happy and it was like, it was beautiful. And then um, when I had the miscarriage at, I think, three months, um, I was devastated. Mm. Like it was, it was, it was just the most like awful feeling because you're you're dreaming of this life, right? That's inside of you, and um, already you're thinking about the life and um, what my, how my life has changed and how beautiful it is to to carry a baby, you know. And then um, it ended up in a miscarriage, and it felt like such a loss. So um, then I found found out that you know like 25 percent of pregnancies end up in a miscarriage, and um, I was shocked because I didn't know anybody. But right after I got my miscarriage, so many people would um, come up and to me, "Oh, I had one, I had one," mm-hmm. and you know. So it was like it was it was nice that they shared that with me because I felt comforted by their their heart because yeah. I knew they knew how you I weren't felt. alone. It made you feel like you yeah. had support. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I mean that that's so important, right? Because yeah. a lot of times you know bad things happen, and you know we think, "Oh, why me?" Like yeah. it's only happening to me but then in those moments of tragedy like other people start to show up for you yes. and you realize oh you're also going through that so you start to connect better totally yeah I, I love when that happens yeah, yeah that's beautiful. really cool so you so after that you had your first yeah Micah probably yeah. Um, I think about two years later okay yeah. that's the first uh, that's my brother's older brother's name too Micah, Micah? the first of in our yeah. family he's yeah. he um, and then and then I had them just like, like a staircase <laughs> boom, boom, going boom, boom, down. Boom, boom. <laughs> when I had Seth, um, when I had Seth, the youngest, mm-hmm. Michael was five. Oh, whoa, wow! So is this like y- y- a year after each other? Yeah, they're like fifteen months apart, most of them. And mm-hmm. one, um, the Josh and Isaiah, the middles are um, two years apart. Mm-hmm. But it's I guess because the way I don't know, it, it just doesn't seem possible, but it is. <laughs> when I had Seth, Michael was five and then the next month he turned six okay. but i would that's when people used to look at me like are, are you crazy and i'd be <laughs> like oh, there I get from god how can you say i'm crazy you know like i'd be so like annoyed mm-hmm. getting these faces like oh my god you're pregnant again and i had mm-hmm. like you know walking around with a double stroller and two babies in it you know yeah. and um and one walking and then yeah. i'm one on pregnant your again. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. and so they, they would uh, everyone i would go are you crazy mm-hmm. and i'm like oh, I, I just be like, you're crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. I this is like a gift, you know. Yeah. But then by the time I had Seth, and I thought about it when I gave birth to him, that my oldest was five. I'm like, oh my god, I am crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you started a career in this motherhood. But can I can I ask what what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, that's what I feel like in my through my childhood. Mm-hmm. All I wanted to be was what. Well, I wanted to be married to a local boy that was five years older than me. <laughs> so I have my local boy that's five years older than me. Uh, wait, actually five years older than yeah, you? Yeah, exactly. What? And it's so meant to be. When I, I met when I met Uncle Tony, um, the sucker told me. I said, "How old are you?" you know, I'm like, "Oh, how old are you?" He told he told he lied. Oh really? Like I was twenty. He said, "Oh, 23. And I honestly went, "Oh, 
bummers, you know? <laughs> and then later he told me that he lied, that he's 25. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell me that? That would have been way better, yeah. you know? So I was in high school, people called the boys, some of the boys, my best friends called me mom. Mm. So it's like, you know, I don't want a guy my age is like, you know, mm. it's like my kid. You You're know? a little bit more mature already. Yeah, I think because I, I mm. was like, you know, super like, you know, I don't know. Like, yeah, I was very mothery, mm. you know? Yeah. Yeah, you give off that m- that motherly vibe. Yeah. Not just because you're a mother, but I feel like you're just very approachable Aww. and compassionate. Aww. So I think that's what people are drawn to. You're, you know, like mothers, they're easy to talk to. Mm. You know, you go, something happens, you just go right to them. So I think that's the kind of aura that you you exude Aww, from, from you. what I can tell. Thank I'm still getting to know you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll change after that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, that, that's, a, that's super cool. And then, so you had five children in about six years, five, mm-hmm. six years. Mm-hmm. And then, well, was the plan to just have this amazing family of surfers? <laughs> or it just kind of happened um, because of the lifestyle? Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you know, we were, we didn't have much, you know. And so um, when, I, I think it just, yeah, it just happened. With my husband was a professional surfer, and um, the kids we had them so quickly. I he he wanted me to stay home with them, and I wanted to stay home with them. Um, and when Micah became, you know, six or something or five, um, my husband asked if I would consider homeschooling him. And maybe he, Mike, maybe Micah was four or three. I don't know. Maybe he was had to be a younger. So I said, "What are you crazy? I'm not homeschooling." I don't know how to homeschool kids, and I don't want to homeschool. And then, so instead of him kind of going, well, I want you to homeschool, and da, 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 he didn't. He just went back and said, okay, well, would you pray about it? And he walked away. He literally, like, didn't, didn't like, you know, um, come to me like this. Like, he, he walked away, so I was like, wait, I kind of want to beef about this. <laughs> yeah, like, let's away. fight a little bit about it. just tell me to pray about it? <laughs> I don't want God to tell me yes, but I really did. I, I prayed about it because it was something crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, from a person that doesn't know anything about homeschooling, never knew a homeschooler, mom, to think that you're going to homeschool? Like, what is that? I have mm. no idea what it was. But he, he had a friend, Guy Almarad, that was in um, Australia, and he had homeschooled his kids, and he just loved the way the kids would talk to them, and, you know, he would be in the room with them, and... Um, they would stay and talk, and he just loved that. And he didn't have a good experience in school, so, he, you know, he just felt like he wanted his kids to, you know, be at home, where we had, you know, more, like, control in a way, not mm-hmm. in a bad way, of like, you know, what's, what, just their atmosphere. Yeah. You know? And so I did pray, and I felt like God really tell me, yes, like, to do it. It was, it was very certain. And, um, and I needed that because it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And it's ne- not necessarily something I would tell you, any, everybody, uh, everyone needs a homeschool. It's really challenging and you really have to, um, you know, step through hurdles to, to know that, to feel like you can do it. Because mm-hmm. otherwise it's, you know, really hard. Did you have any support? Like, were you tag teaming mm-hmm. with Tony or? Did you have like other teachers come in, or is this all you teaching all five children? Um, well, Tony, Tony was working all the time, mm-hmm. you know, um, and but I started to build my community. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as I started homeschooling, then my friends, I would go somewhere and then I see a friend, and they're like, "Oh, I'm homeschooling too," and we're like, "Oh, let's get together." So mm-hmm. when when I was throughout the whole time of um, homeschooling my kids, I had like about three or four friends that were um that were homeschoolers too and we had a they we all had like four to five kids mm-hmm. each so when we came together there was like a good good handful of you kids. basically started your own school yes we had our own school <laughs> when we're when we we're played together but I, I found it easier to just school them myself mm-hmm. you know tried the co-op thing but it's too much work to, okay. to go out i had enough kids yeah yeah <laughs> i didn't want any more kids. imagine that was easy <laughs> so when did you make time for surfing or how did surfing come into all of this did what, what was that a priority over school or how how did it kind of 
When in the federal. beginning, it wasn't the priority was work mm -hmm. more than the kids surfing. We okay. didn't really think that oh, we want to make pro surfers like not at all. Mm -hmm. Now that was not even in the forefront. Um, my husband never forced them. You know, we we took them out when they're babies, but they hated it. So we just let it um, <coughs> them play while we were working mm -hmm. on the beach and. We started our um, surf school when the kids were young. So we would go down to the beach and just hang out and, um, you know, Tony would work and I could help, you know, answer phones or with customers. But um, then they, then we just, it just evolved, right? You get, mm -hmm. they get older, older, then you leave them on the beach, go do your land demo at the, you know, the store and come back and do the lesson. And um, as they grew, they started taking care of themselves. And then you, they built, we built a, like a community of, other locals that were that would come down to the, the beach all day with their parents mm -hmm. or you know some of them with their parents and we became good friends so it was just kind of a tag team of taking care of each mm -hmm. other yeah nice and <coughs> sorry excuse me so through all of this it seems like uh faith was a big driving force in your life yeah and was that just from your upbringings you were, you grew up christian and you wanted to instill that into your kids and Mm -hmm. you, you obviously wanted a Christian boy. Mm -hmm. So that sounds like it was more important to you than surfing and, you know, everything else. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I became a Christian when I was 17. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a massive change in my life of um, stability. <coughs> um, un feeling super lost and super insecure, um, super... Uh, empty mm -hmm. as a as a as a senior in high school and then I walk into a room with my auntie Hazel and a bunch of my like 80 of my classmates you know and um then they start singing these songs that I've never heard before and I, just something was there that I never experienced that was so real and tangible and I just remember crying all the time you know and and then when my auntie would share about God's love, God's love, God's love and forgiveness, God's love and forgiveness, like I felt like it got embedded into me, mm -hmm. like the feelings of that softness and the sweetness and the, the gentleness um, now made sense because she would teach from the, from the Bible and it, made, it connected to me. Mm -hmm. It solidified my feelings and gave it some ground to, to what I what what she was teaching and what mm -hmm. became my belief system. Mm -hmm. And that changed everything to me. Mm -hmm. um, so when I found Jesus and he became a part of my life and um, forgiveness of my life, like you get renewed and restored of all these hurts and pains from the past. And you have to walk through, you know, it's not just, um, you know, celebrate, celebrating all the time. It's also like confronting things I'm doing that's wrong or hurtful or th things that I needed to forgive mm -hmm. people I needed to forgive in my life which is really difficult mm -hmm. so um, but that bring me, brought me freedom so mm. a lot of time pain does isn't always a bad thing because it <coughs> it's pain tells you that something's wrong yeah yeah and so you, you deal with the pain and then I had freedom mm. so um, yeah like I, f I feel so blessed today to be you know, 58 years old, and um, having my 40th reunion is like is saying I'm. This is 40 years old I am in mm. in the Lord. You know, and how mm. long I've walked with Him mm -hmm. in my life and experienced many many highs and many many lows. And there's never every year I'm more certain about who He is and what He's done for us and what He desires for you know humankind to come to know this beautiful, precious love that he mm -hmm. has. Yeah. Nice. I love that. And I, I, I can see that. I can feel the love that is going into you coming out when you speak. Aww. This is like, it's the coolest thing ever like, to see the passion yeah. and how much you believe in it. Mm -hmm. it, it that, that's amazing. Yeah. And yeah, and I, yeah, it's, it's making me think of my uh, my my family's really religious my dad like we we grew up going to church all the time um he he made us remember bible verses in hawaiian so we all have hawaiian bibles um and yeah he he uh 
he talks about it all the time, just like how much it changed his life. Because after he graduated from Kaiser no way. in 79, oh. he started going to a Hawaiian church. I don't know if you know Auntie Leafy. No. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, he started going. And that's when he really found God. And wow. same, kind of the same story with you where, you know, a lot of her, a lot of, you know, things in his past he had to, you know, forgive and, you know, get through. And through Jesus, through God, that's how he did it. And through the Hawaiian language. Wow. Yeah, so th- since then his life has changed too. And it was around when he was 17 or 18. No way. That's yeah, awesome. so it, it's really cool to hear similar stories. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's really cool. So, uh, I feel like you were kind of just meant to be a mother, like mm-hmm. that. That is who you are, and it's a it's a very important role. Like, what what does being a mother mean to you? And what is some advice that you'd give to other mothers? Like, mm-hmm. not saying you know everything, but maybe yeah. stuff that you know you you could share with other people who are just maybe going through similar struggles or trying to figure out how to be a mother, how to be the best mother possible. Yeah. Um, well, being a mom was my dream. That's all mm-hmm. I, you know, when you ask, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? I just wanted to be a mom. Um, my dream was to have six kids. I have five, but I did have a miscarriage. So hopefully I'll get to see, I felt it was a boy um, in heaven one day. Um, I feel being a mom is such a special a gift um but you also have to have something to give you know so that's why i was so thankful to have met jesus when i was 17 because um if i didn't like it actually scares me and to think that what if i never um heard about him Mm -hmm. and what if i never like gave my life to him and what if i never believed in his word um, what if I didn't know how to love the way he's taught me or forgive the people mm-hmm. that have hurt me? Um, it, it actually makes me feel like so sad for the person I would be today mm-hmm. um, because I would probably be super angry and super harsh. I'm already sometimes harsh sometimes. You know. <laughs> Depends who you talk to. Well, when I have your kids on, I'll ask them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I'm, you know, I'm strong now, you mm-hmm. know, because I, I feel I have um, this love inside of me mm-hmm. that I can, that's sure and mm-hmm. doesn't move even if my life is crumbling. And, yeah. Um, so it, it, it makes me sad for, for, um, to think that if I didn't have him. Mm. I, can, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. So to be a mom, like, um, it does take so much, you know, like you're giving a new life direction and you're giving this new life love and you're pouring all this in. So if you don't have, um, have something to give, it's sometimes really difficult, mm-hmm. you know, so that I'm just thankful that I have this love that I, um, that I could pour out to my kids. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not perfect because you get frustrated. You get annoyed. You get like, like you're like, I, I don't even, I have nothing more to give, you know? And you have those moments, but then, um, you know, just there's always that special place that you can go to to find that peace and comfort from God and mm-hmm. assurance and faith to, to, to move on. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your question? Yeah, no, I, I, that's, that's good. I think you're, I just wanted to know, you know, what does me, being a mother mean to you and like something to share with other mothers out there? Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think being a mom is like such a special gift because you, you first get to, you know, father doesn't get to feel what it's like to have a baby within them, you know, mm-hmm. or to, when you look at the book, you know, those, um, what to expect when you're mm-hmm. expecting. <laughs> we didn't have apps. We had yeah, a book. Yeah. We had to actually look. And I remember going, okay, you know, month one it's this size month two it's this size month three the heart's beating mm-hmm. oh now this is forming and you go four five six seven all the way till its birth right and and through through the process i couldn't wait to the next month because once i read it i was like oh now i gotta wait 30 days to to see the <laughs> next month you know and um but then you're already loving and like embracing already holding onto this life mm-hmm. that you're given you know that's within you and thought about like God's thought about this life like every one of my children he's 
thought of them before. And I, I it, you know, they came and they, mm -hmm. he blessed me with them. So it's like to think of that whole process is so special, mm -hmm. you know, and we get to embrace that life mm -hmm. within us from from the very beginning. And um, and I, I just feel like that's a really special thing of being a mom. Yeah. yeah. And that's also why mothers are the greatest thing yeah. ever. I'm a mama's boy. Love my mommy. <laughs> Shout out yes. to you. Love mothers. I mean, we grew up in Hawaii, especially with 10, 20, 30 mothers, you yeah. know, from playing sports, from going to school. Mm -hmm. All these mother figures, these female figures in our life that, you know, just got to go through so much struggle. Then, you know, especially males, go through, I mean, giving birth, like, Females, literally, they literally grow something inside. That's yeah. crazy to think about. Yeah, and you, you got to carry this baby and uh, nurture it and give these nutrients to it. And it's just the older I get, the more I'm just in awe of, you know, mothers and what they have to do. Especially, you know, my brother has a, a niece with his wife. You know, she's two years old. Get to see, you know, them being parents. I get to, you know, see see her grow up and. It's, it's the coolest thing ever to see how people go through different uh, chapters in their life yeah. and it changes them and, you know, through whatever that is, it's faith, maybe, you know, some other thing that whatever pe people believe in, it, it's cool how you kind of just figure it out. And uh, again, I, like I'm 29, so my, my mom had my first brother around my age, maybe younger. And like, when I think about that, I'm, I'm thinking, I don't even know what I do if I had a kid right now. So it, it makes you more empathetic thinking like, oh, okay, well, why were we so angry or, you know, complaining about our parents growing up? Mm -hmm. They're our age when they were raising right? me. And you're like, mm -hmm. I, I pretend like I know what I'm doing, but at times I don't really know. It's just all, you're just figuring it out. Right. Whether that's a job, being a parent, you know, just doing anything in life. It's, we don't always know how, know or have the answers. Yeah, so it, it, it's so crazy to, to think about that, to put yourself in their shoes. Yes, um, that's good. Yeah, so I, I love hearing these stories. It's, it's super cool. So um, we got a little bit more time before we got to get into Instagram questions, but I do want to ask you about a very hard time in your life where you lost your home. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can share a little bit about that, because you said you, you love talking about it because mm -hmm. of how much support came from it. Mm -hmm. So first, can you just tell us what happened? Yeah, well, For it's people kind of, who don't know. It's kind of actually funny. I mean, not not the bur the, <laughs> the house burning wasn't funny, but I was dying my roots. So if any of you know what you look like when you dye your roots, oh yeah, it's the most you don't even want to. You have the tin foil on top of no, your, no tin oh, not, foil, not like that. It's just the dye here, oh, okay. and then your hair is all like up here <laughs> and. It's the worst look ever. It's like it's it is really the worst look ever. So I got my hair up, timed it, and I was cooking dinner. My husband's on the couch sleeping. He he got he was working all day, taking a little n nappy. It was like probably seven thirty ish or so. Wait, in the morning. In the night. Oh, in the night. In yeah, the night. we okay. eat late. We eat late. Okay, at night. okay, okay. So I'm cooking, and then oh. my timer goes off for my hair. So I'm like, okay. So I'm, okay. This is seven thirty. I put a, a old shirt dress on like it's a short dress like you mm -hmm. know and no there's no short i mean i have my underwear on mm -hmm. but you know have that shirt on um got my hair up so i go to the bathroom i walk down to the bathroom and then i hear pop 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 and i'm like and i'm like oh what is that i'm like i i couldn't i couldn't see through the bathroom so i went came out of the bathroom and i went to the bedroom and i look in through the um the window and I see out the um, it was a garage and the fire was coming from this little storage bin and it was just like shooting up <laughs> like as, as if it was like um, those rocket things when you fire you know put those rockets and go oh yeah right? yeah yeah but it's like the huge. fountains yeah the fountain yeah but it's like this this big coming out and it was fierce it was now the my house is was old so the and the garage had termites so I was just like holy like this is gonna go fast, mm. right? So I run to to the I run back to the tone. I said, "There's a fire! There's a fire! Someone set a fire!" I thought someone threw something in the garage, mm. and it l blew up. And so he 
gets up like del- he wa- walked around because he just got up and he's like what you know mm-hmm. so he finally get, goes out with our fire extinguisher um by the way with fire ex- extinguishers they're supposed to be shaken shaken every not shaken but just turned around every year okay so if you don't do it then it just stagnates and it doesn't work so mm, it didn't work because it was probably about 15 years old wow. right so he grabs it goes out doesn't work comes back in and i'm still like i'm just like i don't know what to do mm-hmm. right he was call the co- call the fire did you call the fire i'm like okay so i had my phone got my phone um and i'm calling calling grab the dog we have a little dog and he goes get out so i my my backpack with my wallet was fortunately right by the door so i grabbed my my backpack with my wallet and i just walked outside now i have didn't put slippers on i didn't put shorts on i just had this t-shirt dress my hair is still looking fabulous <laughs> and i i go outside and the whole neighborhood's out cuz it's like the garage right so they're trying to put it out and you know, the hose is starting to come and we call the um, fire um, and pretty much fire came in they, you know thank god we have such great rescue people between the fire and the police they were there so quick they they bought in fire trucks from town too so we had like six trucks that wow. were working it was amazing watching them just just work and um, the fire just went through the house so fast it was mm. crazy and there was lots of wind so oh. that day was windy so it was blowing through it was unfortunately blowing from the garage through the house right mm. and um and so my my son lives across the street and his um he had a someone renting his ohana unit and she came and she was i'm so sorry what can i do for you i said can I please wash my dye out so I I'm losing my house I don't want to lose my <laughs> hair cuz I must have had it in there for 45 minutes already and it's just 30 minutes right so I went there washed my hair out I asked for pants put my put pants on and my car fortunately was parked across the street mm-hmm. so I had slippers in it and okay. other small clothes there but pretty much stood outside watching my house burn down um, my friend started to show up shortly. It was, I guess, it was on the news or something or whatever, and they they came and pretty much watched the house being burnt. That's crazy. Down. Yeah. Well, well, what were you feeling lo- looking at that? It was kind of surreal mm-hmm. at the ni- on the nighttime when it was happening. It was so surreal because you've never have never seen a house mm-hmm. fire, yeah. you know, I mean on TV, but not in front of me. Yeah. Or you never think it's gonna be you, right? right? Right, And then you're, you know, all these things are going down. What it, everything's in there? Like we didn't, I didn't take anything. I know that's what the first thing I'm thinking. Like, what yeah. would I take if that yeah. happened? But you're literally going around yeah. in circles, like, like this. I just had the dog and my phone, mm-hmm. you know, and my backpack. So, um, I did wish I grab my computer it's the only thing mm. that I but when I went back the next day my brother was is there anything in there my brothers came down to help sift through things and like even that you don't know what to do you don't know what to do you don't know if the house is gonna if we walk in is it gonna crumble mm. is the ceiling gonna crumble so I was very nervous the, yeah. the second day we went in um, and yeah that's when I found my Bible so um, I heard about this story yeah it was amazing because I was like, I wish I grabbed my Bible. I just wish I grabbed my Bible. I knew where it was. And I'm like, there's no way it survived because you look in the window and you've seen the, all of the, you know, things, the insulation from the roof coming down, the, all the, the, the chemicals they sprayed. Everything was just was burnt, like crispy burnt, everything, you know. And it was my Bible would have been right on the lung of the fire of, from the garage straight out. It was in that pathway, but my but I said he goes well. Where is that? I go. It's right there by the island. And he goes so he's sifting and you know poking through it and going. He goes what is it in? I said it's in a black leather bag. It's in the bag. And so he goes is this it? And he brings it up like that. I'm like I'm like oh my god yes it is. So he opens it and he he goes is this it? <laughs> I go it's it. And it was like. It was it was alive. He goes, it's alive. I go, yes, it is. Wow. It was amazing. It Unscathed. was amazing. And it, yeah. So when he brought mm-hmm. it out, I was just like, oh my gosh, I bought it today because 
There's oh, a really? hack as well that I want oh, to okay, share okay, with okay. you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, save that for later. You that's, little Bible lovers out there. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was... amazing? Yeah, it was amazing. That That's yeah. that's something where it can't just be explained. Like, no. That's not just human doing. No. That's a higher power. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was... God wanted me to have that. And, and it did, of course give me faith to know that, you know, whoa, you know, how did this survive? Mm -hmm. You know, funny that I had like four Bibles because I like to give them away when people, mm -hmm. you know, are interested. Mm -hmm. And um, the, they survived too. They were in the boxes wow. in the cabinet. <laughs> they survived That's too. Crazy. Yeah, I had other books too, but they didn't survive. Yeah. Like they were wet or if they were there, it just was like, you know, a little burned or, you know, destroyed from the wet. But then mm -hmm. the other Bibles in the, bo in the boxes, brand new, survived. That's that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what the most stolen book in the world is? The no, what? The most stolen book in the world. I think it's the Bible. Stolen. Stolen. Yeah. I think what? I saw saw that fact one time. Really? Yeah. I might have to go Google it. That's interesting. But yeah, I I'm pretty sure it's the Bible. Wow. Yeah. So, that that's a crazy story. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Even remember when the lava flow was happening on the Big Island? Yep. How it it you know took out all these houses, but it stopped right at in this park by near Pohiki, it somehow it just this park it it was safe somehow but everything else was was burned but it went around it or something wow those those kind of yeah. things just make you think right like, yes what, why, why? Yeah. i mean yeah yeah no I, control <laughs> i know okay so what was the aftermath how did you recover from that and and i can i can imagine a lot of trauma you know yeah. PTSD, any, all, yeah. everything just happening yeah. all at once. Sometimes I get a little like this feeling of more being displaced. Mm -hmm. I think that's, it's not the fire, but it's this displacement. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I'm in a place and I feel like if there was a fire, where, where would I go? Mm -hmm. You know, like that kind of gets me like, you know. Mm -hmm. But the next day, um, that day when we went back and about, um, the following day we went back again. And um, we thought maybe we should go through more things just to see if there's anything there. So at least about, I mean, we had a bunch of people that came to help us and just to support us. And um, I had like five of my very close friends that came and we were just standing in front on the sidewalk looking at it. And they're like, oh my gosh, like all the memories there, you know, because we had Bible study when they were young and um, so much happened in the house that, you know, we ate so many dinners there and had so many stories. And um, they're like, wow, all of our memories, you know, there's so many memories just are burnt, you know. And there, it was just like a somber moment just mm -hmm. looking. And then I had a revelation of like, you know what? I'm like, the house is burnt, but my memories are right here, mm -hmm. you know, and you guys are right here, mm -hmm. you know. So, like, I, it was it was very quick to 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 learn or understand that it, I didn't lose anything mm -hmm. because what's most important is here and here, mm -hmm. you know. So I think the hardest part, honestly, the hardest part for um, anybody that loses a house in fire is um, insurance will pay for your house right away, they, which is so, so comforting, right? Because they'll pay for whatever your pre the premium or whatever is right away. Um, so you feel like, oh gosh, thank God, you know, I have this, and it feels like it's something mm -hmm. you're holding on to. But the the in contents, you have to write down every single thing mm -hmm. that you lost. And I haven't done it yet because every time I sit down to do it, I get I get so sad and mad because I like I told the insurance people, I said, you know, it's so cruel to do this because I've parted with everything that day. I parted. I said goodbye to everything. I'm like. There's nothing more that's important than what's right here, mm -hmm. our life and the memories. And so to say, you know, to write down, you know, that, you know, Sus, my son's first boards got burnt, you know, and there's no, there's no money you can mm -hmm. put down. Yeah, how do you put a value, you a price on that, that? Yeah. My grandma's, you know, um, wear, China wear that she snuck, to, you know, under my grandpa and not let him know that she bought it, you know, I have it. You know, and all that kind of stuff for silverware, and it and it went it went down. So, it just it's just in, that part has been a little bit hard for me, and I still haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, the, it's, I can't imagine. 
what that would be like. I mean, I had a friend, my, one of my best friends growing up, when we were um, over here on Oahu for a soccer tournament, his house caught on fire and his dad passed away. We got, got caught in the fire. So, I mean, yeah, that really puts things in perspective. And, like, you already have the mindset, well, everything important is right here, you know. All that just material things, you know, you can, it can be replaced. Maybe it can't re be replaced like the china that yeah. your grandmother stole, you know. Uh, that that's a, that's irreplaceable, but you you still have the memory. That's that's what you can hold on. Not something physical, but you know something that you can carry with you yes. for the rest of your life. But yeah, I think any time something as tragic as that happens, it's you know it it really puts things into perspective. But it also makes you grateful for yes. other things in a way. And I know following that, there was a lot of love that was showered on you and your family. And what was that like, just feeling that I tremendous mean, was, support? Yeah, it was overwhelming because mm -hmm. from the, you know, I, I swear everybody that's on my my contact list mm -hmm. was texting me. Yeah, plus um, social media. Social media right? was People so don't even generous. Know. Like, yeah, and, and then... I remember seeing it on social media. Yes, yeah. it was amazing, just the people's comments and DMs. Like, there were so many. It was just, it was just, um, it was so beautiful. And then, then um, they had a... Um, GoFundMe that went on and that was that I mean that was incredible to see so much being poured out for us mm. and it was all of that together was um, like we weren't alone like you know we weren't alone mm -hmm. we, weren't, we weren't in this together because people felt our pain they felt the loss and they're saying you know we're here beside you it was so beautiful yeah and I think about what was it over a hundred thousand dollars was raised yes that's Crazy, and I think that's just a testament to show how much love people have in the community for you. I mean, everybody knows the Mooney's family. You know, if you're a surfer, every, even if you're not a surfer, I only got in surfing this past year, but I knew the Mooney's family. Like, and I think it shows how much of an impact you you all had on the community. Mm -hmm. So it was just their turn. It was an opportunity for people to give back and reciprocate that aloha that you all gave to the community. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that was just a good example of that. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a, such a cool story, you know, from tragedy comes beauty sometimes. Yes. Aloha, Hawaii Verse Podcast listeners. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and I'm here to tell you the difference between Hawaii Verse Podcast and Hawaii Verse. I know a lot of people get confused and think Hawaii Verse is Hawaii Verse Podcast. Well, they're all connected. Hawaii Verse Podcast is a branch of our business, Hawaii Verse, which is an online platform that we created to support local businesses. We started off as a coupon directory with just 40 businesses in Hilo, and we expanded statewide, and now we have over 1,000 businesses on our website and coupons, so you can go and support local businesses. We also have an e-commerce store, kind of like the Etsy and Amazon of Hawaii, so that you can buy local products and support local businesses. So make sure you check it out, hawaiiverse.com. We have a lot more bigger updates coming your way, but for now, enjoy this podcast and enjoy all the local deals you get from Hawaiiverse. So we're going to get into Instagram questions. Okay. And I got some good ones, okay? Right. So the first one comes from Megan Tasaki. She's my sister's best friend. She's a huge fan of yours. <laughs> Hello, Megan, if you're watching. Hi, Megan. <laughs> uh, so she wants to know, if you could choose one piece of advice to give to someone in their 20s, what would it be? <laughs> I would say um, if you ever had a moment where there were, God put an impression on you, like there was a little moment of like, oh, like you felt something that was different or saw something even in creation that was more than just like, oh, that's a beautiful sunset or that, something that hit you deep, I would say to take the time to reflect and embrace it and even ask him, are you real? Mm. Like, don't let life just push over, you know, those moments because that could be your moment. Mm -hmm. And because he's always looking and he's always touching us at different times, but sometimes we are too busy or we don't want to know, you know, when we think that God might have too much restrictions over us and it's, you know, life is so boring if we have to listen to these rules, but it's really not that. It's, 
he came to give us life and life to the full. And so if he created us, then he knows what we need to live life to the full. Mm -hmm. So when you get touched, listen and kind of dig in deep, Mm -hmm. dig in a little more. Yeah, everything happens for a reason. So if there's like, you know, we talk about the na'au, your innermost being, your your gut. You know, you have in Hawaiian culture, you know, you have to listen to that. That's what, you know, maybe in Hawaiian culture, it's just our na'au, but, you know, in modern, or not even modern, just like in other beliefs, it's God, you know, whatever that is. But it's that feeling where you have to act upon, like when Tony walked in, you had that feeling, right? And you did something, right? So (laughs) I, I... (laughs) <laughs> it makes a lot of times people just let that pass, you know, like, yeah. oh, that was cool. And they kind of, just, you said we're too busy. We're not like yeah. kind of focusing on yeah. or just reflecting, thinking about that. It's so important to reflect and to, you know, really think like, okay, hey, why is that happening? Why is that important? Why did I feel this way? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. when you're talking about, you know, God can save us. I, I remember seeing this thing. I don't know if it's a quote or something like God can throw you a life jacket or lifeboat or rope mm-hmm. when you're drowning in the ocean and then, you ask, why didn't you save me? Yes, that's so good. Yeah, some, something so like good. that. And I yes. think that happens with a lot a lot of times in life. Like We just want to hand it to us. Like, tell, tell me exactly what to do. Yes. When sometimes people in life, whether that's God, mentors, or anything, they're just kind of guiding you, you know. So yes. I think it's so, so important to listen to the whole Ailonas, the signs. I love like that. that. Mm-hmm. I love Hawaiian language. I wish <laughs> I was, I wish I knew because it really, um, I'm going to probably start crying because like, as I study more, you know, mm-hmm. and I um, listen more and listen, I feel like the Hawaiian language speaks what I feel mm. deep, deeper than English words, you know, and it it translates to me more than the English language does, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so I love that. Yeah. Well, I think because yeah, Hawaiian has is it's such a meaningful language where yes. everything has has a purpose everything yeah. has meaning you know that we talk about kauna the hidden meaning of everything mm-hmm. we can look at something and you know when when you learn different languages to your your perspective on things you you understand things differently you see things differently mm-hmm. you know things are aren't translated literally sometimes so you kind of have to like find ways to understand things or to explain things so i think that's the cool thing about hawaiian language yes. is that you're able to kind of look at things through a different lens yeah yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> it is. I'm very blessed that it's my yeah. first language. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> jealous. <laughs> oh, you know, it's never too late to learn. <laughs> okay. So Liv Fit says, this is not really a question. She says, okay, I'm fangirling over this one. She's just, Cute. yeah. So that wasn't really a question, but I just threw in something because I, well, I wanted to know. What is your favorite thing to cook? So I just ex- expanded oh, on her question. <laughs> what do I like to cook? Gosh, I like, I, I, cook a lot of things depending on what I feel like eating mm. like sometimes I think like I oh I'm you know thinking of my husband but I think I think about me too because that's what I want to eat as well mm-hmm. you know well, is he a vegan that's why or a vegetarian no we we did go on that we um he had cancer and so mm. we went both vegan for about a year and a half and it I felt like it really helped both of us kind of reset um ourselves but then we started eating regular again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's hard with the local culture. Where it's you have so hard. All these amazing it, foods. We you have know, so much Shinkatsu, good food. Korean yes. chicken, you know, teriyaki beef. Fried pork. <laughs> Fried, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I don't know what my favorite thing to cook. I mean, salmon is the easiest. Mm-hmm. Good. It's like furikake salmon. It's so easy. You know, mayonnaise and capers mm-hmm. and tomatoes and onions or, you know, just put Yoshida sauce and yeah, broil the it. Yoshida That's so sauce. good, you know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think salmon would be like the one I cook the most, just because it's easy, mm-hmm. you know, just super easy. Mm-hmm. But um, I think people, mo- more people know me for cooking shoyu chicken because I mm. cooked it. It's easy to cook for a lot of people, and I've yeah. cooked for a lot of people all my life. So. That's, that's comfort what, food right there. That's, what that's such a mom for. answer. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you take it out. My, I'm really close with my neighbors and uh, my auntie, Auntie Lisa, loves cooking show you chicken uh-huh. my mom cooks good show you chicken that's a, that's kind of hard to mess up yeah yes it is yeah, yeah. i love show you chicken awesome 
You're making me hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question comes from jmotu27. They want to know what are the values that you made sure your children have? You know, um, when you raise your children, you raise them to, to you, what you believe, you know, and our values, um, you know, from, from, for myself, my faith in God is um, the values would come out with, you know, loving, honoring people, um, honoring your elders, respecting, um, respecting them, and, um, and, and choosing love, you know, mm. above all. So um, that's what my, I hope, you know, that would translate to them. And for my husband, he, he um, you know, they, they said that he was the ambassador of Aloha, you know, as wherever he traveled, he mm. would bring Aloha to the land. And he has l left a pathway for them as they traveled the world, um, in every part that he's been, they people would come to them and say, "Oh, I know your dad. You know, he hung out, or he stayed at his house, or he took care of me, and or he came to stay with me. You know, whatever you need, here's my number. If you need help, I'm there. If you, whatever you need, just let me know." And they've they've talked about that um, mm -hmm. every time they travel. They would call back, call call us, and let us know or tell us the story later. So I think um, you know, loving and respecting people and your, the place that you're in. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome. I'm just curious, does it ever get difficult to, to navigate um, like a lot of people just because you guys are very well known, you know, just because for generation, just from, from Tony up to, you know, Seth, people know the Moniz family. Does it ever get like overwhelming? Where it's just like people always want to come up to you guys or like talk to you guys. Maybe you're having a bad day and like they're just bombarding you and it's hot. Does it ever, is it ever difficult to like constantly show that aloha when no. it's, no, it's just so natural? Well, not, it's, it's like I just feel like, you know, like I have people that I look up to and I've never met, but I um, get inspired by their mm -hmm. life, you know, and, um, and I'm so happy that people can find that you know goodness in our life because it's not always good mm. you know it's not always happy it's not always um beautiful you know like we social social media we where we portray the, we i feel like social media we can um celebrate the goodness we celebrate the love we celebrate all the beauty in our life but that doesn't mean we don't suffer and that we don't have pain and we don't struggle mm -hmm. and that there's really bad times and we don't, you know, get frustrated with each other or fight with each other. That doesn't, I'm just not going to put it on there. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're like every other family. Mm -hmm. So um, when people say, you know, come up to me, like I'm happy that they'll, they'll you know, that they, you know, yeah, can I take a picture? Or, you know, mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, of course. You know, it's like so sweet mm -hmm. that they would, you know, it's like, I mean, it's just sweet that they mm -hmm. would think that. Of us or mm -hmm. yeah yeah great answer I I liked how you said celebrate our, our lives because I, I always heard of social media as a highlight reel you know we, we share the best things about it and to me like a highlight reel kind of sounds more like you know this like you just want to show off to people you want uh -huh. you want to just be like hey look at me I'm having such a good life I'm in Hawaii you know whatever <laughs> on vacation or, but I like how you say you celebrate. It's yeah. like just like celebrating your accomplishments, yeah. you know, showing off like winning, you know, the, a surf competition or getting married or, you know, having a kid. These celebrations of life. I like I, I'm going to start thinking of it as um, a celebration instead of a highlight. Yeah. That's it. I, I just really like that oh, you said that good. celebration. Yeah. yeah. OK. <clears throat> Cass Kahealani wants to know what was your life like before children? You know, being a wife before a mother, maybe just your life with Tony. I mean, we still were surrounded by um, you know, a lot of youth. Like when, mm -hmm. when I married, um, when we got married, we started going to um, a church in Hawaii Kai called Hope Chapel Hawaii Kai, mm -hmm. and they had a big youth group. We had um, our friend Gordon Horn, Pastor Gordon Horn. He invited us to um, give our testimony of you know just our life and. Um, at his youth group, and the youth group was like 80 kids in a little in a house in Hawaii Kai, and we never left from there. Like we fell in love with the kids, um, we really like bonded with 
with them and um, from then on it's I mean that there were our kids you know and there was a lot of them until we had kids and they were there raising our kids and you know to this day we some of them have come back and we're we're kind of all in the same area and we see each other and now their kids they had kids mm -hmm. and their kids go to the um, youth group that a youth group and mm -hmm. I'm like I want to be there so I'm I'm helping with a youth group mm -hmm. um, because of their kids are in the youth group now so and oh. the bond is so strong like a grandparent mm -hmm. you know but not but kind of and so um, there's always been a lot of people in our life you mm -hmm. know whether it's surf or surf community or our, um, our church community mm -hmm. um, yeah we've had a very a lot of people yeah I, mean, I can imagine your auntie and mom to so many kids in Waikiki, uh, you know, in the church community. You probably know all the Groms growing up yeah, in Waikiki. Yeah. Everyone knows <laughs> Auntie Tammy, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, some of them got schoolings a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got to keep them in check, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. My last one. My Hawaii first team wants to know, if you, could go, go, if you could go back in time and change anything, would you? Hmm. I mean, of course... You wish you could do things better, you know, like especially raising my kids. I think um, there's times when you've, especially when I talk to other people or other kids that have been raised in Christian homes and you hear of their pain or their, you know, um, things, how they perceive God, you know, because of their parents. Um, then I'm like, oh, I did that too, you know, mm -hmm. like I did that too. And, and, um, I wish I wish I could do those things differently, you mm -hmm. know, to not represent God in a way of, um, I, I would like to represent God always right, especially to my kids. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think that we get fearful as parents, you know, and because you want, you believe so much that God is the, has so much love and his, his way is the best for them and keeps them on a protective path and path of love. And then you don't want them to, to go anywhere from there because you're afraid and then what but but if we don't have faith we have to we have to have faith and when we start fearing then it gets we can get up it can get weird mm -hmm. you know like we start fearing and so we get more like you mm -hmm. know like, holding on or yeah, no you can't overbearing and, yeah and it's like we can't trust mom. yeah <laughs> yes so i i there's things that i really wish i could do better in that mm -hmm. that way but for the most part you know like um we can't you know, and um, we have now to to change things or to to live live better or um, do better, and so I just I just try to keep it right now because there's nothing I can do from mm -hmm. the past. I just trust that God is gonna help everybody else along the way if I've hurt them. Yeah, you know, that's good. I, I don't think you could ever go back and change anything, but you can share your experience with others in hopes that they don't do the same thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. They don't make the same mistake, if you consider it a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Well, mahalo for everyone for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave some for the next guest, and maybe your question will make it on the podcast. Okay, so speaking of your children, you've seen them grow up and enter these competitions and probably get hurt a lot. I know there were some pretty gnarly ones for some of your kids, um, like Josh. Leah had something where she mm -hmm. busts her face, yeah. <laughs> her lip. Um, so how do you how do you stay calm watching all of that, and well, how do you not just have a heart attack every time you see them go I out <laughs> in the in the water? Um, I think part of I honestly feel there's part of me that when I when something's really traumatic, there's also a shutdown mechanism. Mm -hmm. Not a shutdown to where I'm totally shut down, but emotionally because I'm very emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's like um, I get on the. It, it's a very interesting feeling because it's like, in, it's like you feel like, oh my gosh, this has happened. But my emotions aren't following it in that way that I would think because I'm mm -hmm. normally emotional, uh, you know, high and mm -hmm. lows emotional. So, um, but I think from, um, you know, some some of us in their childhood when we had tra traumatic moments and. Um, we respond differently to it, and so we have to survive, right, as, mm -hmm. as a child. So we learn to, like, cope. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, like, when, when my daughter, that, when her teeth got busted out, like, 
I, I'm like, why didn't I fly to California? Like I, she lived in California then. I said, I should have met her in California. I should have been with her. She made it like it was nothing. Mm-hmm. Like she's like, no, mom, I'm fine. You know, her friend was going to be there for her. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll come if you need me. But I should have just gone. Like it was just so weird. Like I'm like, why didn't I go? I questioned myself that so much, you know, because mm-hmm. it was really bad. Mm-hmm. Like it was really bad. And, um, and then when Josh, you know, when Josh got hurt, um, that one was like, that he one. was paralyzed. Yeah, that one sounded scary. Yeah, he was paralyzed and he couldn't move and we didn't know if he was going to walk again and, and all that. So, um, I mean, and again, like, it's not like I burst it into a billion tears, but it was just like, okay, well, what do I got to do? Let's go. I told him, asked this girlfriend if she wanted to come with me and thank God she did because we were a great team together to you know we had some hoops to to go through to see him or to figure out you know if we're gonna how long we're gonna stay where we're gonna stay and so it made it so nice you know Mm -hmm. that she was there she could support him while i try to work on you know Mm -hmm. figuring things out um yeah that was that was probably one of the most dramatic things that Mm -hmm. happened and then my other son had a concussion and um while he was snowboarding you know and it it just like really it really um it really affected his life you know like having a concussion and so and then that was that was really hard that Mm -hmm. one was a hard one too so injuries are i uh, i have a i feel so deeply when um people get hurt like that because it really sets you back and you really have to dig deep to find find it out Mm -hmm. you know it's really really difficult Mm -hmm. you know i got i've I've gotten hurt so many times playing i've played sports all my life i get injured all the time so i know it's it's tough but i don't i don't do anything at a competitive level anymore or at a professional level so you know for me it's just like oh i can't do something uh it's a hobby right Mm -hmm. but for some people who who do it as a career like you, like you say, it sets you back. That's year. That's years off of your career. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, Seth, you know, he's on tour and yeah, he's his hurt right now. He right? got hurt, and thank God it happened right after the cutoff. Mm-hmm. You know, because if it happened earlier and he skipped two events, he would have been he would have been off. Mm. You know, so at least he's he's qualified for next year because mm. he made the cutoff and then he got injured. Yeah. You know, so that's just like you know, it doesn't always happen for people like that. You know, yeah. but we're so, I mean, we are thankful. You know, but yeah. yeah, that's cool. Well, well, let's talk about the opposite end of that. The it's the celebrations, uh, <laughs> like the the highlights. But speaking of Seth, you know, the, the was it the first event of the year? Yes. When he pipe. he made it to the finals against yeah. Kelly Slater, yes. that was so epic. I remember seeing you yeah. and um, just seeing everybody so happy. I mean, he he didn't win, but what a cool moment yeah. that was. Yeah, it's, it was it was fantastic. Like yeah. the. Just the energy and everybody, all his friends and family came down and, you know, we were there. It's so exciting when you make it through heats, <laughs> you know, you're there for a while, right? Yeah. So it's so exciting, you know, and, um, you know, just the, just all the support we got from the beach and everybody was, it was just mind blowing. And yeah. then, you know, to be with Kelly, like he's a, you know, a longtime friend and, um, you know, in the world, I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a champion, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, to to be up and against him was such a blessing. Like it was it was a gift, you know. And it, it could you couldn't ask for a better script. Unless, yeah. Uh, it, well, you could you could have won. But <laughs> <laughs> Next time, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Kelly. Gotta take it a little easy on the young folks, <laughs> <book>, right? <laughs> uh, That's right. And Ke- Kelly, yeah, she's won multiple mm-hmm. um, world longboard titles. world titles. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Yes. You, uh, and I was there for one. Yeah. Yeah, that Isn't was that amazing. Such a proud mother moment. Oh yeah, it was so good. And the mm-hmm. beauty with that one was that the um, Hawaii boys, mm-hmm. um, Kai Salas and um, Dwayne, mm-hmm. um, they were there and they cheered her up. Oh, you that's know, awesome. so it was like that was just like amazing. You know, yeah. so she had that support and yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so cool that to be part of that and mm-hmm. you know to know you had a part in in that. Yeah. So, so awesome congratulations to Thank you and your you. family it's, I'm, I'm the biggest supporter of just local people doing amazing things you know all the athletes yeah. I don't even know them I'm just so supportive any sport I just I love seeing 
Hawaii people succeed. Yes, it's and I love thing. seeing you do what you're doing too. <laughs> so good. Still working on it. Still, still building, building up my career. No, no championships yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I'm curious to know because uh, before the podcast, we talked a little bit um, a while ago about you know you're you're Japanese, you're not Hawaiian, but you all, you had this great appreciation for Hawaiian culture, and I'd like to talk about you know the the impact of culture on our lives because here in Hawaii, it plays such a a vital role, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. did, did you ever feel, feel out of place or like maybe you're missing something because you were not Hawaiian or? Yeah, when, you know. and growing up in high school, so in our generation, I was, um, the, war, the World War II happened, you know, um, a genera- like 40 years or so, I don't know how many years prior to when I was in high school. And so um, we were, we hung out with Japanese, like all the girls were all Japanese. <laughs> like you hang out with your people, you know, and especially at that time because it was more significant. Like that's your people, mm-hmm. and we were called the Japanese Bomb Squad, <laughs> 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 which was fine. I mean, we didn't. It was like, yeah, we are. I mean, look yeah. at us. We are. You <laughs> I mean, know, you're not yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah, but there was something inside that you're like, oh, you know, everybody wanted to be Hawaiian, mm-hmm. you know, and. Um, so, but when I started um, in my senior year as well, I started to dance for, um, I, I, well, I started to go to Makassans. Hmm. And they were in the ranch house in Aina Haina where the Longs is now. There was, oh, a, no there was a restaurant called the Ranch House. It was like a family dining area and there was a bar at the, uh, in the night. And they would play four times a week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from like 8 to 12. And my mom started going. And so she goes, you got to come. So I went with her. I would go every night for about two years. I would go every single night by myself. If my mom didn't come, I'd go by myself. Mm-hmm. So I got to meet them. Um, that's when um, um, well, Skippy was there, but he passed. So I was there when he passed, which was really heartbreaking. And then Israel, um, his brother is, and then um, Jerry and um, John Coco and Moon Kaukahi. So, you know, I got to really um, and be, be in within this beautiful Hawaiian culture, you know, with the music that was like, you know, I, I got to sit in a place and hear that music four times for mm. four hours every week. And um, that, was, that was a gift to me that I feel like I got to hear that and be in the, be in the moment and watch it happen. And then um, Moon's... Um, was married to Israel is and Skippy's um, sister, Lydia, and she had a halal, and they would um, practice in Papakolea, and the girls would dance there. And I just like, oh my gosh, I want to dance, mm-hmm. you know? And so she, she invited us, my mom and I, to go and um, dance with them. So we would go to the gym and, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, learn hula from her, and then then I could, and I started to, like, they would call me up to dance, you know? So I got to dance with the Macassans wow. with, with Israel there. And it was like, that's, that's like the best times ever. And funny, because I was Japanese, when you're surrounded by Hawaiians, you have to kiss everyone. Mm-hmm. Like everyone, yeah, not yeah, just yeah. the person you just see, but if there's a room, you gotta go all around. Yeah, exactly. I'm Japanese, okay? <laughs> I did not know how to kiss. We don't kiss. <laughs> so I would practice like in the mirror, but then I get, confused was it the left cheek <laughs> or the right cheek yeah, yeah, you know and I one time landed on a guy uh-huh. that I didn't want to land on because I was just like whoa 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 and I kissed him on the lips I'm like oh my god that's so ir- that's so embarrassing you know so I always remember it's your right cheek you just yeah yeah right? you just gotta commit you, just you gotta, gotta commit, commit to it, yeah. but you gotta practice if you don't know how to do yeah. it <laughs> you might make a different you know this so anyways I you know learned how to do that and um but I got to really experience um the, the culture that mm-hmm. I love and um, as as non-touchy as the, ja- the Asians are the Japanese um, there's still similarities of the culture mm-hmm. with family mm-hmm. and the respect exactly you know for mm-hmm. your elders and um, and the love for children mm-hmm. you know so um, there was the, the, it resonated in me mm-hmm. you know? yeah and you and I see you and um, some other you know family members dancing hula yeah. with their friends you have a little halal mm-hmm. uh, so it's really cool to see that 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 part of the culture being perpetuated yes you know yes. yeah so you 
I went to Hawaiian Immersion School all my life. I don't know how to dance hula, oh. you know? <laughs> so I, I got to get on your level. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, so something I'm curious about because you grew up in the, maybe not grew up, but you're in the sun a lot. Yes. <laughs> you know, I don't know from what age until, you know, especially now and since you started working at Locomotion, your surf instructor. Well, I, I'm curious because I feel like a lot of people would want to know what is your secret or what is what do you do to take care of your skin and your hair? How do you keep it healthy? I used to have long hair before, so I mean, I don't need this advice anymore, but maybe my skin, I'm surfing a lot now, so I'm in the sun a lot. You know, okay, well, what is one thing? Life hack yeah. one. Oh, let's, yeah, let's go right into okay. life hacks. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Love this. Okay, so <laughs> when I was growing up, I did not use sunscreen. Yes. Because why? You want to get tan. Mm -hmm. Sunscreen's going to make you not tan, right? That's usually what I do. My, my, yeah. my thing is, if I'm really white, I just get burned. That's like the first layer. And yeah. then I start putting on sunscreen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, when I, um, you know, we didn't, I didn't use sunscreen all my life from I mean, forever, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I think just in the last maybe 10 years or so, maybe eight years, like I was like, okay, well, maybe I should start using it mm -hmm. because my... I went to the doctor and the dermatologist was saying, oh, you know, um, do you use sunscreen? I'm like, no. She's like, oh, wow. I'm like, because I, I don't need it. She was like, well, you're getting sunspots. Mm -hmm. You know, all these sunspots you're getting is from the sun. I'm like, no, it's not. Uh, it, she goes, no, it is. I go, no, it's my grandma. My grandma, um, I inherited it. This, <laughs> she had sunspots all over her body. And actually, I loved my grandma so much. I was infatuated with her that when I started getting sunspots, I was like, Yes, <laughs> I'm like my grandma. So when I see my sunspots, that's what I used to think. I'm like mm. my grandma. And I'm like, I go, no, look, 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 look. This is all like my grandma. She's like, no, it's it's from the sun. I'm like, no. She goes, D does your grandma go to the beach? I'm like, no, see? She goes, did she work in the yard? I'm like, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could say you go to the go in the sun there's certain parts of my body uh -huh. that has sunspots all over okay <laughs> one part is on your hand on your arms this part right here mm -hmm. whatever it's called and on the um as surfers we get it on the top of our thighs because mm. you're sitting down a mm -hmm. lot yeah so um that's the part you want to kind of cover up and i tell my girls that now like i know you guys don't think you need it but Put the sunscreen on. Mm -hmm. It matters. Or even a shirt. Because mm -hmm. it does. That's why the Asians, they cover themselves because mm -hmm. they don't get sunspots. Yeah, they have right? beautiful and then, skin. Beautiful skin. <laughs> and, and the doctor goes, so I got it from the sun? She's like, yes. And she's like, like your skin, if you didn't go in the sun, it would be the same as the skin in the covered areas. Oh, my gosh. I'm like, oh, my, <laughs> my skin could look like this or like this. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You know, so... Um, yeah, you know, whatever, that's the case. But, so for my face, uh -huh. this, is my, this is my first hack. Okay, okay. This is, and I it. bought this for you so you can oh, have it. Wow. So this is a virtual stick, and this is not an ad, although <laughs> they are my sponsors <laughs> too. Go, go check them out, yeah. <laughs> but no Virtua is um, the surfer stick. So like, mm -hmm. um, I see everybody yeah, use it. It's, it stays on. Mm -hmm. My whole surf, surf school, we use it because you, when you put it on, it doesn't come off mm -hmm. like lots of other stuff. It, it's mineral-based? Yeah, nice. and it and it also um, doesn't burn your eyes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of sunscreens will burn your yeah. eyes as well. I don't know what it's in there. Yeah, and it's reef safe. Yes, yeah. it's all that. Nice. Um, it really stays on so much that you have to actually use like you know baby oil mm -hmm. or olive oil or some kind of makeup remover yeah, to take yeah. it off, right? But life hack one. This is also my concealer because Laz, my body has sunspots. My whole face has <laughs> sunspots. So do you have sunscreen on right now? I always <laughs> put this on every day. Uh, okay? It's a tinted one. Yes, yeah, it's a yeah. tinted one. This is the Kona Gold or the mm -hmm. Shane Dorian, my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, and that just covers all the sunspots. But I use that kind of lightly under my foundation every day. Mm -hmm. nice. So that my face can look this like smooth. Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't have it, it's all sunspots. So this is very, very important. Yes, okay? yeah. So those of you that have sunspots on your face, use this. Even guys. Yeah. When they put this on, you're like, oh, my God, you look so great. You're like, oh, I have virtual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I, I get it. I get yeah, it. Same yeah. thing, same thing. Yeah. You know? No, I love it. I, I use a zinc-based. Zinc. Based, um, zinc. 
Well, this is yeah. yours. I appreciate that. I'm excited to use that. I'm, <laughs> I'm probably going to go surf tomorrow, so okay, I'll great. use it tomorrow. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, for sharing that. Yeah. yeah something I got, I got to get better at, too, is wearing sunscreen. Uh, yeah, I usually, I usually put it on my face and shoulders now, but I, I got to do it more consistently because sometimes I'm like, I'm only going to surf for about an hour, hour, half. I'll be fine, and I'm a little darker. So, yeah. But then, yeah, you, to think you're stronger than the sun yes. is foolish. Yes. I've, le- I've learned the hard way a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. Okay, awesome. That, that's great. Do, do you want to share other life hacks while we're at it? Okay, this is a recent mm-hmm. one. Okay, you're going to laugh, but <laughs> it's, and it's, it's already a little dirty, but I washed it. This is... Uh, I'm very oh, confused if you're watching on uh, a fry wall, YouTube. <laughs> and this is, not a, this is not an advertisement. I not an advertisement, again, just to be, that, be clear. I bought this baby. <laughs> And this is from Amazon. It has different sizes. It's a so fry confused. wall. So if you have a pan okay. and you're frying oil, and oh, you know okay. when you put chicken or whatever, mm-hmm. and it goes, it sprathers everywhere, and it's annoying because you just clean your whole surface, mm-hmm. and now you're going to fry something, right? You put this in your oh. pan, You put, and it splatters all here. Oh, it's, it looks like a big wok. It's like <laughs> a cover. Wow, yeah, that's smart. Okay. See, I, yeah, I was thinking smart. fry like from the sun or something, but oh, you're talking no, about cookies. No, this is cookies. Okay, Sorry, that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, 100% <laughs> everyone should get Never this. seen that before. Yes. Where can you get it from? Um, Amazon. Okay. It's called Fry One. I nice. think there's different fry colors. Cool. And I got to get a smaller one too, so. Nice. But this is like am- amazing. Okay, amazing. cool. Amazing, okay. Tell me like you. <laughs> DM me and tell me how you like it. Yeah. Okay. You have a, you have a refer- referral link or... So uh, affiliate link you want to drop or <laughs> no. something? But if they want to sponsor me, I'm taking sponsorships <laughs> yeah, okay. for that. Okay. Same for the podcast. If Same you want to sponsor <laughs> us, just yeah. let us know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. This is another one for those of you that like Bibles. Like, I'm a Bible freak, nice. obviously. I love, I love what's going okay. on. She's so, the most prepared guest that yes. we've had. <laughs> this, is gonna be, this is fun. This so this was my Bible that got burnt. Okay. Well, it didn't get burnt. It got yeah. saved. And... It doesn't smell burnt, but it felt burnt for a mm-hmm. long time. The, the, the smoke stayed with mm-hmm. it for a long time. So anyways, for me, when I get, I've been a you know, Christian for 40 years, and I've had many different Bibles, but um, when I mark Bibles, I, I mark my Bibles. Like I like to mark Bibles. I write wow. everything in it because it, it stays life, right? You mark one, and you're like, oh, you remember this? It, it spoke to me like five years ago. Mm. So sometimes I have dates on them. Sometimes I have notes on them and i can reread them and it comes back to life right so i i love to do that well when i get a new bible what happens is and i bought a new bible here mm-hmm. if you see this bible it feels so good like you run, you know you yeah. go oh where is this oh let me find it oh there it is you know and it's like <laughs> so it feels all like yeah, yeah. If you can do this so easily and find the pages yeah. i love it it feels used it feels like Mm, yeah, well, his history has character. Right? Yeah. Okay. When you get a new one, though, so this one's falling apart. I need to get a new one, but I need to get one that has a bigger, bigger print because mm. my eyes is going bad. So when you get a new one, it's all nice, and it's really hard to flip. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, and I don't well, like this. Yeah. Flat. It's mm. it's like, like you know, it's not like it's like, you know, you want it used. Mm-hmm. So my life hack with this, and I've done this all for because one time my my Bible got wet mm-hmm. accidentally and mm-hmm. then the, the the pages kind of crinkled up a bit yeah and i'm like oh my gosh i love this <laughs> drive. i'm like so what i do now is i start from this the beginning uh-huh. and i get a new bible and i put you're listening i put <laughs> yeah, yeah. well i am i hope they are too <laughs> <laughs> talking to the guy right oh, there. oh jordan. <laughs> jordan you're listening watch <laughs> and i i get a plate with with water and i just tap my hands in a little go like this and i go I, I turn two pages, tap it, and I do this for my whole Bible. The whole, turn how two, long does that but take? But not too wet. My Tiara, she did it too wet, and her Bible came bubble Bible. It was like this big. I'm like, no, you put too much water. <laughs> <laughs> and so I should have done it for her, but you do it lightly. So it's just lightly, and yeah. then, and it and it comes so, like, touchable after. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's life-changing. Wow. Okay, so um, just saying, okay. Uh, again, is, DM me if you guys are listening <laughs> and it works and it's something that you yeah, like. Yeah, let us know if it works. But not too much awesome. water because okay. then it's going to come like tiaras and it's going to be super fat. But I told her, put something brick on it or something mm-hmm. for a while and push it down. Yeah, or maybe a, what about like a wet paper towel or something? 
N- no, like no. if it, no, just you could just use your hands because okay. it doesn't have to. You don't wet the whole surface. You just yeah. like okay. a little bit. Maybe just get like it's like uh, equivalent of having like sweaty, sweaty yes. palms, yes. like that kind. Yes. Like you need moisture, uh, yes, but not sure. not just like you just wash your hands. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So that was my life. Nice. Is, is that is that all? Um, I want you to keep going. Can you just do this for another hour? This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, my other do it again. Do it again. <laughs> was I don't have it. I wanted to stop at the store, but I was of course late. No worries. But the Japanese scrubbers. Oh, is it is it that of uh, like the 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 oh Jordan's giving yeah. that thumbs up? He got oh, one. You the, Asians out there, the <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. The um the blue and pink one. Yeah, is that the one that you buy. Yes, you can get it yeah. at Longs or mm. you know all those stores, but it's a um. Um, it's like this long and it's made out of nylon mm-hmm. and it's hard. Yeah, it's scrunchy. Like, what is it? Kind of like, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I don't know, know what it's called. It's like a nylon wash thing. Mm-hmm. And it's the best because you can exfoliate, put your back, done. It's mm-hmm. an Asian deal. Yeah. yeah. I don't, see, I, I, I'm, I'm a guy, I don't use washcloths. I don't, unless, unless I'm doing, like, growing up playing sports, I would use washcloths because I had mud on me from sports. But yeah, now I, I don't use scrubbers. I don't, don't use anything. I got to. Mm-hmm. Might have to start doing that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just it my. It might be hard for your because your your nice skin. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Skin. Maybe maybe I got used to just being super simple when <laughs> I was living in Madagascar and just taking bucket baths. I didn't. Oh. I didn't, you know, shower. My the longest I went without showering was ten days, in okay. Madagascar. You, yeah. I I showered for you though. I showered. Okay, I showered. Don't you. worry, guys. Thank I showered. You. If you're smelling me right now, that is not me. Yeah, I showered. <laughs> I, I really wanted to get you one just in case in this situation and you didn't have one. I'll, I'll go. I'll Shops. go find one. I always gotta go to Longs for okay. my grandma, so I'll go Thanks. find one, and then I'll, I'll tag you when I find one. Okay. Cool. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, we're getting closer to the end of the podcast. I'm having such a good time with you, Mahalo for sharing those life hacks. That was amazing. <laughs> I I want to know what's next for you. What are your future goals? You know, I know you. You know. All your 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 children have less left the nest. Mm-hmm. They have their own children now. Your grandmother, you know, you 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 got into photography. That's something that you do. So what is what is the future hold for Tammy Moniz? Um, well, I mean, I don't really do much photography, like, because it's so much work actually for you photographers out there. It's not just about taking photos, because you have to drop them down and edit them and mm-hmm. then send them. Everyone's them asking somewhere. you to send it to them. Yeah, it's like holy cow. <laughs> it's like wow, but um. We're, well, we have our um, house in permitting right now, and unfortunately it takes so long. You know, it's going to take a year to get our permits to even start building, mm-hmm. which is so sad. You know, like, people should not have to wait this long for permitting. But that's the way it is. So we're, I'm going to be building our house. You know, at, like, at the same location? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. So that's going to come up in about a year and a year, hopefully. Um, and then I have four um, grandchildren right now that I love and and we're having so much fun with and I, that's only two two of my children mm-hmm. and my daughter ha- has one and she just started so I'm thinking oh how many more grandkids <laughs> am I going to get I'm going to need a bus <laughs> you know you're going to need the, 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 the van yes, the passenger van yes, like the DeSoto like I used to know I had that <laughs> yeah. back in the day and um, I'm going to need one. But um, they better hur- start hurrying up because I'm you know, getting old, right? <laughs> I don't know if I can handle all of them. So, <laughs> But I, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing my family grow and mm. um, just just enjoy life and, you know, live the life that they were created to, to mm. live and to, to enjoy, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Just full of fully into the mother, grandmother life. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. It seems like you really, really just love doing that. That's awesome. I love awesome. it so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool because I, I talk to people, you know, entrepreneurs and athletes, and we talk about their passions. And it's so cool. I've never had anyone who just talks so passionately about just being a family member, Aww. you know? And it's not just being a family member, you know? It's like, it's, it's such, it's, I don't know how it, this even makes sense, but it's just, it's really cool to just hear it. Aww. Like how much you love being a mother, grandmother, just being with your family. Because Ohana means the world to me. And he, here in Hawaii, you know, to us in Hawaii and other cultures as well. But yeah, just, that's amazing. Thank you. Okay, so what is your greatest accomplishment? What are you most proud of? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. What do you think I'm going to say? Well, I, I feel like what you're most 
proud of probably your family being a mother. Yeah. That's probably the greatest accomplishment. A hundred percent. But I don't want to put words into your no, mouth. No, but I, I mean, like, it's it's not so, I don't, I guess I don't think, like, what, um, I, I don't, it's not, I don't think, I never really thought about what is my proudest thing. But, I mean, yeah, I feel like in the, I think building, you know, family uh, from my kids to the, you know, the people in my life that are um, close to me and that I love very much and are part of our family. And um, there's different communities of, um, you know, we have our surf community and have my church family. And um, it's like all of it together is something so rich to me and um, priceless because it's, it's um, builds, it, it, it's like these, um, you, walk, you walk into whatever situation you're in and you have so much love around, you know, and so much, many stories and so many um, experiences together, you know, that is, is, is so rewarding, you know. Even the, like in the surf community, you have these kids that are used to be like kids to me and now they're, you know, succeeding in different ways and it's so fun to like be able to connect with them, but then they're not, they're not, they're not, you know, 18 or they're not 27 or 30 they're actually still like 12 mm. to me you know and to them too they mm. they feel that and i love that mm. you know i love that about about just creating life and friendships around you you know and and watching it grow and wa watching my kids um one thing i really enjoy watching my kids actually is the way they love other children mm. like i think that's more that's super rewarding to me, just to see their love that they they deposit in in children's life is um, is so beautiful to me, mm. you know, and um, more more than their other accomplishments, you know. And of course, I'm so proud of them with their accomplishments mm. and um, who they are and who they've grown to mm. be. But um, it's it's really special when people love on children. Yeah. Right? I think that, that so sometimes that that is more important than you know the accolades you know mm -hmm. it's like not what you do but who you are as a mm -hmm. person you know you could you know win all these championships and you know travel the world be this really famous person but if you're not a good person it's like what's mm -hmm. the point you know yeah. if you're not you know impacting others lives in a in a positive way then you know you just you just have trophies yeah that's all you have yeah yeah Awesome. Okay. What is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? Mm. You know, I, I will say this because I think now with social media and when people come to me, they're like, oh my gosh, you know, um, I just love your family. You guys are so awesome. You're such an inspiration. And I honestly, like as much as I'm saying, I say thank you and I mean it, I'm also very uncomfortable mm -hmm. because I don't, ever ever want someone to look at our life or even to say our name to think that we are untouchable family mm -hmm. that they could never be because mm -hmm. that's not true mm -hmm. like if if anyone were to say um something that they've struggled with or their family around them has struggled with in their life um i could probably say yep that's one of us or yep i can relate i mean ev probably everything mm -hmm. you know so um, I would like for everyone to know that we, every human is given exactly the same opportunities in life to learn, to love, to forgive, to um, reach out um, and serve, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody, mm -hmm. nobody, we're no special people, mm -hmm. you know, everybody. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what I would want them to know, that we're not different than mm -hmm. anybody. Yeah. yeah, I think just because, you know, followers, social media, you know, you put these people on a pedestal, like, mm -hmm. oh, they're, they're in a different category than yeah. us, you know? Yeah. But then you realize you, you have conversations, you, you get down to, you know, you look behind social media, you look underneath the iceberg, and you realize, wow, these people go through the same things as, exactly. you know, as anyone else. Yes. No, it's not just rainbows and butterflies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I think and that's why I love podcasts talking about it because, like, you know, maybe somebody's listening to this and they're listening. 
Oh no, I thought Tammy and the Moonies were so perfect. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, you know, they're just like me. Yes. They have their own struggles, you know? 100%. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's something that people have to realize too. It's just social media is just, you know, celebrations mm -hmm. of the best times of your life. Yes. You know? Yes. So we, we, we have to make sure we, we separate, you know, that from reality. Yes. Yeah. Not saying it's not real. Some people were very open, very transparent. But, you know, there's a fine line. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Oh, we got some uh, <laughs> receipts going off, <laughs> some, some printer stuff going on. Okay, so last question, uh, and then we'll go out and I don't know, what, what do you have planned for the rest of your day? I'm going to help my friend move. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool. Oh, I'm, I'm sure when uh, your house is done and everything is, you know, being built and moving things in i'm sure you're gonna have a whole squad you're gonna have extra a lot of extra little hands to, yeah. <laughs> to help out <laughs> okay so what are some of your favorite local businesses to support oh i know gosh. there's so many but there's just, just so name many. whatever comes I to mean, your mind um in what way anything anything yeah restaurants um, uh, merchandise you know clothing i don't i mean there's there's too many yeah some friends, some family ones you want to give a shout out to? Um, well, what are some of your favorite places to eat? I always like to know food places. Yeah, well, we eat everywhere. And that's why it's so hard because mm -hmm. we, we eat everywhere. Oh, gosh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Too much pressure. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. I w I, that I would have had a list. Because <laughs> it's like there's so many and you're like, oh, my gosh, I should have said that one. Because <laughs> blah, 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 you know? It's okay. Like okay. How about this? Just give okay. me give me a suggestion where to go this week. Go to eat to get some to eat at local oh, place. Okay. How um, that? Oh, there's a great sandwich place in Costco Center in Hawaii Kai. Okay. Um, and I forgot their name, but it's in the corner by a sushi place. It's kind of oh, like right by Sushi Man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Yeah. Um, like some mala mala tavern ma mala Mar yeah mama? some yeah yeah i've and never been there i oh, always go really to sushi good. man to pick up sushi for my grandma oh, okay. but i never go to that yeah it's so really I gotta, good I gotta it's go really there. fresh right by the marina yeah Yeah, the boy the um jp he i think mm -hmm. he went to kaiser oh okay yeah. so um yeah so he he did that <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. That, that's good. Great. That's good. Woo! You look. It looks like <laughs> this is this is the hardest thing you've ever that's done. The last thing I ate yesterday <laughs> because food. We eat so much food. Yeah, so. Yeah. Okay. I'll go check that out. Mahalo for the suggestion. Yeah. It'll, it'll uh, motivate me to you know go go <laughs> one shop over. Yeah. Okay. Right on. So yeah, Mahalo so much for sharing all this. I had a really good time. I'm sure the listeners really enjoyed hearing all the stories and the advice and the life hacks and everything. Did is there anything else you want to share with the audience before we wrap up? Um, I just thank you, mm -hmm. thank you for um, having me, and it's so special to feel like you want to, you know, hear what I have to say. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, I mean, I'm sure I'll have some of your children on, but I can't have them on without having <laughs> you on first. You know, you are the, you. the the glue, the rock of the Moniz family. Thank so you. I just wanted everybody to to know the story, hear the background of you know thank this you. legendary surf family. Well, I want to yeah. say one thing before we go. So as far as surfing, if you live in Hawaii and you've never surfed before, like, please go once. <laughs> like, come, do a lesson, though. Don't Do yourself a favor and do a lesson. Yes, and do the giveaway. I didn't do a lesson. I wish I had mm -hmm. a lesson, like how I we give our mm -hmm. lessons, you know? It would be such a rewarding experience. And then you'd never have to surf again if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. But to not surf, not to ever try it when you mm -hmm. live in this land and this is part of our culture mm -hmm. like is is like people travel all over the world to surf they travel from everywhere and they come to, to surf and and if we live here and we're a part of this land like just try it one time yeah you know and this is the best Waikiki is the best place to, to surf in all the world so try it once and if you don't like it then great but mm. you never know yeah you, you know? hear that Kanoe Ku my younger siblings I keep telling you guys to go surf go come surf, out and surf yes. It is. I, I never surfed to, until I was in my 20s either. So, you know, that feeling of catching a wave for yeah. the first, it's the best it's feeling the best. ever. And it's such a progressive sport yeah. where, you know, you start going straight. You're like, wow, this is so fun. Then you realize you can turn. Yeah. You realize you can walk. You realize you can do these other t um, tricks. Yeah. And it's just the, the most amazing feeling ever. Plus, you know, you're in the sun. You're getting vitamin D. You're getting yeah. a good workout. Hanging out with friends. Yeah. Meeting people. Yeah, I, I, I just... 
I'm self-taught, so I don't. I never. I probably should have took well, a come, lesson. Come, let's go sit together. Yeah, you'd be like, "Wow, this guy. <laughs> he says he surfs, really." <laughs> yeah, but yeah. the kings and queens surf. You know, surf. I know, but it's so I talk about this with other guests too. Surfing is such a hard sport to get into as an adult mm-hmm. because of the social pressures. Like you don't want to, you don't want to look dumb. You know, you you want to be able to be good at something, and it's hard because it's not like going to a basketball court. You can just shoot, shoot yeah. basketball right yeah. by yourself and practice, get those reps in. You know, you have to rely on the ocean. Are there going to be waves? You have to worry about the crowd. Then you're thinking, oh, is everybody looking at me because, you know, I'm embarrassed or I don't want to cut somebody off. I don't want to go up and fall. So there's all these things going through your mind, which are really hard to to learn as an adult. But, you know, just I'm an example of someone learning as an adult. So are you. Mm -hmm. You just got to do it. You just got to get over that. And at some point, you're just going to get past that where yeah. you're, you're not going to worry about the crowd. You're not going to worry about other people. And it's just going to be you and the ocean. And it's going to be the best time of your life. Yeah. So, yes, I love <laughs> that you said that. It's awesome. Where can we find you? What are what are your social? Oh, this media? isn't an ad <laughs> this either. I'm just, just saying because this is what I <laughs> tell people all the time. <laughs> but we're, we're at the um, Billabong store in Waikiki mm-hmm. and at the Outrigger Waikiki. So okay. And that's the Fate, Fate Surf said, School yeah. and Mooney's Family mm-hmm. Surf. Yes. Okay, and then what are you on social media? Tammy Moniz. Mm-hmm. Okay, go find her. <laughs> All right, so mahalo Tammy for joining us on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Check us out on hawaiiverse.com, the best place to support local. Spread aloha, be kind to one another, and mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll hear me next time on the Hawaii Verse podcast. Ahui ho. Ahui ho.